So last time we did conic section. So this is what cone? It's a double cone, right? Up and bottom, double cone. And I have a plane. This is a plane. So when I cut the double cone, the upper part, or one part, by a plane like this, then we get what? Then we get something like this, yeah. So we have parabola. That's what we did last time. Parabola. Uh -huh. When I cut the cone like this, Mm -hmm. Then I will get an ellipse. Uh -huh. And when I cut it like this, both part, so there is one up, one down, then that is called hyperbola. Uh -huh. So last time we derived the standard form of parabola. And let's do ellipse and hyperbola today. And then we will do some sequence. So first of all, ellipse. So you have it on your handout. Let's read it together. Shida. An ellipse is the set of all points in a what? In where? It's the intersection between the cone and plane. So the ellipse should lie on where? Plane. Uh huh. So in a plane such that such that the blank of the distances between P and two distinct fixed points. Okay, so we need two fixed points. So here is one fixed point and here's another one. Okay, so we need two fixed points. One, for one we say focus, for two we say foci. Foci is the plural. Okay, so we have two uh, two focal points and those are fixed and what we'll do is we'll look at the distance between a point and the two distinct fixed points so point P is here we'll call it X comma Y and we'll measure the distance to one focus and the other focus uh -huh. and then we'll add them up okay and I'm going to fix these distances and go around. These distances, the sum of the distances are fixed. They do not move. It is fixed. And then I go around the point. Then what I get is an ellipse. So when I do that, I will get something like this. Like this. And all these some are fixed. Okay, so ellipse is the set of all points in a plane such that the what goes into the blank sum of the distances between P and two distinct fixed points is they do not move. It is it is fixed, uh, or you we can say starting with C, it is. Constant, right? Uh huh. Constant. Uh huh. It is constant. Mm. It is one fixed number and greater than the distance between the two fixed points. Okay. So let's read this again with the plans filled out. An ellipse sheet. Uh? An ellipse is the set of all points in a plane such that the sum of the distances between P and two distinct fixed points for pi is constant and greater than the distance between the fixed points. Greater than the distance between the two. Fine? Mm. Okay. So, these two points are again fixed. We will measure the center center here, that's the center, okay? So we will name this center as H comma K. This is H comma K. The center is H comma K. And the distance from the center to the focus, are they the same? 
Yeah, they are the same. This is the middle one. That's the center. So call the distance as C. C. Okay. So C is positive. Given this point as h comma k and the distance as c, what would be the coordinate of this focus right there? Uh, uh, it would be h plus c comma k, right? How about this one? h minus c comma k. So first, okay? And then we're going to measure the center to the end point of the ellipse and we'll call that distance as A and A is positive. So the distance from the center to the end point here, we'll call that distance as A. So far so good? And A is positive. Okay, so with this, we can derive the formula of an ellipse. So this point right there is x comma y, and we're going to add the distance from there to here, there to there. Okay, so what is the distance between p and h minus c comma k? That distance plus that distance, it will be square root of distance between the two points x minus h plus c squared plus y minus k squared plus square root of x minus h minus c quantity squared plus y minus k squared is that right? Mm. that's the distance between this and that add it together Fine? Mm -hmm. And that distance is constant. Why is it 1? Why is it 2? Ah, oh, it is 2a, right. Why is it 2a, right. Uh -huh. Why is it 2a? Uh -huh. So, pull that point to here. So pull this point P to here, to this point. So pull it here. Then what is the distance from here to there? A minus C, right? And what is the distance from here to here? Here to the other focus. It will be A plus C. How about this one? It is A minus C. Mm -hmm. So we get 2a, exactly. So a minus c plus a plus c. So we get 2a. So first of all, mm -hmm. because it is constant. Get it? Pull, pull that x comma y to here to this point, right? Then I have to measure the distance from here to one focus. That is A minus C, that is that distance. And then here to the other focus. Then I get A plus C. So it's the sum of A plus C and A minus C, and C cancels out and we get 2A. Is that right? Because the distance is constant, that's how we produced this ellipse. Fine? Okay, so let's solve this for x and y. So if you've done the homework, what we can do is the following. We can take the center, h and k as 0, 0, and then later on translate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So pick h0, zero, k0, zero, and then translate later. That is our strategy, okay? So more simplified is this x minus c squared plus y squared equal to 2a. Let me move the other one to the right hand side. So I get x plus c squared plus y squared. Everyone agree up to this point? 
Yes. Uh huh. Okay. So I move that to the other. Okay. So to solve this, let's square both sides. Square, square. Then we get x minus c quantity squared plus y squared equal to. What do we get on the right hand side? This one squared, which is 4a squared, and then we get minus 4a square root, right? Uh, square root is with the plus sign, x plus c, and then we get quantity x plus c squared plus y squared. So far so good? Okay. What well, cancels out? Uh, y squared cancels out. What else? Uh, from here we will get x squared plus c squared minus 2xc. And from here we'll get x squared plus c squared plus 2xc. So we can cancel out x squared and c squared, right? Okay, so what we get is the following. If I move this to the other side and simplify, then I get 4a square root with the plus sign is equal to 4a squared and what is this coefficient? How many xc do we get? We get 4xc. So far so good? y squared cancels out, x plus x squared plus c squared cancels out, and this will be. Is that right? Mm, okay. So we can cancel 4 off, mm -hmm. and then square both sides again. Then we get a squared times x plus c squared plus y squared, right, is equal to a4 uh -huh, plus 2a squared xc plus x squared c squared. So far so good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what can we do with a squared? Divide by a squared. So a squared plus 2xc plus x squared c squared over a squared. So far so good? Okay. So what we'll do is we'll collect x squared, c squared, a squared together on the left hand side. Remember this is x squared plus 2xc plus c squared. Mm -hmm. So that and that cancels out. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is x squared quantity. I have one from here and the other coefficient from there. So minus c squared over a squared and then I get y squared equal to a squared and then I get c squared. Fine? So far so good? Mm, okay. Let's look at the relationship between a squared and c squared. Okay. So, up here, suppose I draw this triangle like this, so that the vertex is right above the center like that. So what is this distance? That's C. Uh -huh. We're going to call that distance center to the top. We're going to name that as B. Hmm? So we're going to name this as B. B is the distance from center to the top. That's B. So this is C, that's B. Then what is that distance right there? Square root of B squared plus C squared. Yeah. So when I add this part and this part, what do I get? 
two a exactly. Uh huh. The distance between here and there that's two a. Uh huh. So from here we get b squared plus c squared. Square root of b squared plus c squared is this thing right there. And when I do two, so here and there together, that equal to two a. Can you give me the relationship between a and b? a squared is b squared plus c squared. Uh -huh. So a squared minus c squared is what? It is b squared, right? So we can write this as b squared here. Then this is x squared, and then we get a squared, a squared minus c squared plus y squared equal to b squared. That's what we have. And a squared minus c squared is b squared. And then we can divide through by b squared to get x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals to 1, where b squared is a squared minus c squared. That is, c squared is a squared minus b squared. So this is longer one squared minus shorter one squared. A was longer than B. A was longer than B. So it is longer one squared minus shorter one squared. So C squared is A squared minus B squared. So once we translate this to H comma K, then this is x minus h quantity squared over a squared, y minus k quantity squared over b squared equals to 1. This is the standard formula of an ellipse. Okay. Yeah, that's k. This is k. y minus k, quantity squared. So this is the standard form where c squared is a squared minus b squared if a is bigger than b. If the focus, if foci are stationed vertically, then b will be bigger than a then c squared is b squared minus a squared. If a equals to b, then what do we get? From the center, this is a and that's b. If they are the same, what do we get? We get a circle, right? Uh -huh. So, for example, go ahead, find the center foci and sketch.
Is this in standard form? What's this standard form? X minus H squared over A squared plus Y minus K squared over B squared is equal to 1, right? Uh -huh. So to change this into a standard form, I need 1 on the right hand side. So we have to divide through by what? Mm, by 8. Then we will get x squared over 4 plus y squared over 8 equal to 1, right? Mm. So when I compare this formula with that, what's the center? 0 comma 0, right? What's A? A is 2. Uh -huh. What's B? 2 square root of 2, correct. What's C squared? C squared is bigger 1 squared minus smaller 1. B, B, B squared is bigger. Uh -huh. So what do we get? C squared is 4, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so when we draw this, because B is bigger than A, is it horizontally long or vertically long? It's vertically long, right? Uh -huh. So the center is 0, 0. A is 2. So we get 2 minus 2. B is 2 root 2. So 2 root 2 minus 2 root 2. And it's an ellipse like this. So one focal point is here, the other one is here. 2 minus 2. Fine? So what's the property of an ellipse? Suppose I emit a signal from this one focus. Okay. So it will hit. The boundary, and then it will get reflected. Where does it get reflected? To there, to the other focus. So every wave coming from one focal point gets reflected to the other focal point. If I do this to every direction at once, how long does it take to get to the other focus? When I send this wave and that wave, the time it takes to get to the other focus is the same because the distance is constant, right? That's the property of an ellipse. So, property Waves that are emitted in all direction from one focus of an ellipse will reflect off the ellipse toward the other what? Uh, the other focus. The other focus. Uh -huh. And the waves will travel the same. Yeah, the sum is the same. Because the distance is the same, the time it takes is the same. Mm -hmm. So they will, they will travel the same time along what path? Any. Uh, along any path or every path. It all takes the same time to get to the other focus. Because the distance is the same. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So next one is hyperbola. So for the hyperbola, we again have two distinct fixed points. They are called foci. So instead of sum, we'll look at the opposite of that. What's the opposite of sum? Difference. Uh -huh. We'll look at the difference. So again, there are two foci. Okay? And measure the center. And the line where the foci are placed are called transverse axis. 
transverse axis is the line where foci are placed. Okay. Again, we measure the center. So, center point is here. We're going to call that H comma K. And the distance from center to two focal points, we'll name it as C. So this is C. The distance from here to there is C. Here to here is C. Okay. Once we do that, we can name this foci. What is the coordinate of this one? H plus C comma K. And this one, H minus C comma K, right? Mm -hmm. And we look at all the points where the difference is constant. So for example, if I look at the set of points like that, so this is P, X comma Y, and look at the distance between one focal point to the other focal point. So when I look at the difference, it should be constant. Okay, so with that in mind, let's fill in the blanks of hyperbola. A hyperbola is the set of all points P in a where? Uh, plane, again, it's the intersection of plane and double cone, such that the what? Difference, chai, right? The difference, uh -huh. difference between distances from P and two distinct fixed points, foci, is what? Constant, right? Uh -huh. They don't move, it's constant. And less than the distance between the fixed points. And less than the distance between the fixed points. That distance, that distance. I mean, this distance and that distance, the difference of the two. That and this. That and this. Okay, so again, the distance from center to where it crosses the transverse axis, I'm going to name it as A. So A is positive and C is positive. Okay, so first of all, the difference is the following. So it's the square root of x minus h plus c quantity squared plus y minus k squared is the difference. x minus h minus c quantity squared plus y minus k squared is equal to equals to what? Mm, equals to 2a. Why is it so? Uh, because if I pull if I pull this point to here, right? Uh -huh. What is the distance from this point to there? C minus a. Uh -huh. And how about this point to the other focus. What's the distance? Here to there is C. Here to here is A. Right? Uh -huh. So, C plus A minus C minus A. That's the difference of the two distances which is equal to 2a. This is pretty similar to the ellipse equation, except this is 
minus. Uh -huh. So we can do it similarly. So again, let's take H0, K0, and then we'll translate that later on. So x minus c quantity squared plus y squared is equal to 2a plus x plus c quantity squared plus y squared. That's what we get. And once we square, then x minus c quantity squared plus y squared is 4a squared plus we get 4a square root with the plus sign and then we get x plus c squared plus y squared. Once we cancel out the terms and move this to the other side, then this is what we get. Minus 4a with the plus square root is equal to 4a squared plus 4xc. Everyone agree up to here? x squared plus c squared got cancelled out, y squared got cancelled out, and I moved that term here. Uh -huh. So let's square, again once cancel 4, let's square both sides. Then we get a squared quantity x plus c squared plus y squared is equal to a fourth plus Two a squared x c plus x squared c squared. Once we cross out a squared, then this is what we get: x plus c squared plus y squared is equal to a squared plus two x c plus x squared c squared over a squared. Fine. Mm. So here we will get x squared plus b, c squared plus 2xc. So 2xc will cancel out and we collect the x together. So we get x squared times 1 minus c squared over a squared plus y squared is equal to a squared minus c squared. Are you here with me? Do you see? I have x squared from here and move that to the other side, right? 2xc got cancelled. Here I will get 2xc and they got cancelled out. Fine. Okay, okay guys, which is bigger? Is A bigger, C bigger? C is bigger, right? Uh -huh. So, A squared minus C squared is a negative number, right? It's a negative number. So we're going to name this as minus B squared. It's a minus number. So we'll set minus b squared as a squared minus c squared or a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared maybe that's easier to remember get it? okay so here's what we get we get x squared and we get a squared minus c squared over a squared plus y squared is equal to minus b squared and this is minus b squared. So divide by minus b squared to get so divide by minus b squared to get x squared over a squared and then what do we get here? Minus y squared over b squared is equal to what? 1 where a squared plus b squared equal to c squared. So once we translate, we can get this standard form. Any question?
So this is the standard form. H comma K is the center and C squared is A squared plus B squared. Horizontal transverse axis, our foci was placed horizontally. Okay. So transverse axis is the line through foci. Now they have asymptotes, asymptotes. Okay. So remember this is x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared is equal to 1. That's the standard equation, right? Right? Okay. So let me solve this for y minus k squared. Then y minus k squared over b squared is equal to x minus h squared over a squared minus 1. Is that right? Yes? Mm. So if I multiply through b squared, that's what I get. Agree? Once I multiply by squared, this is what I get. And then if I take out this term outside of the parentheses, this is what I will get. Agree? See this? We are taking this outside of the parentheses, then one will become this. Right? Okay. Asymptote is... Limit as x approaches to infinity. As x gets bigger, as x gets bigger, what happens to this term? A is constant, h is constant, so that will go to where? It goes to zero. We can disregard this. Then what I get is from there, so we can disregard. Uh, disregard. Ne neglect. Okay, then that's what we get from there. Y minus K squared this is approximately equal to B squared X minus H squared over A squared, right? Once we disregard it, as X approaches to infinity, that's what we get. Then we get a line once we take the square root. So limit as x approaches to infinity of y minus k squared is equal to this line, b squared over a squared over x minus h squared. Well, when I say line, I am taking this square root. So y minus k is plus or minus Once I take the square root, I will get plus or minus, right? Uh-huh. So plus or minus what? B over A X minus H. This is the equation of asymptote. Okay, so here what are the asymptotes? It is this equation. Y is equal to plus or minus B over A X minus H plus K. So, for vertical transverse axis, so in this case, focal points are placed like this vertically. Then we can switch the role of x and y. So, when we had x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared equals to 1, that was the standard equation with horizontal transverse axis, which had a plus sign there. So for the vertical transverse axis, we can give minus to this term and plus to that term. 
So this is with horizontal transverse axis. So for vertical transverse axis, the standard form is we give minus 2 the x term and plus 2 the y term. So that's the standard equation. How about asymptotes for the transverse axis? Right, so from here, it is y minus k squared over b squared is equal to 1 plus x minus h squared over a squared, right? So once we multiply by b squared, yep. So y minus k squared is b squared over a squared x minus h squared quantity. We will get 1 plus, and whatever here, we'll have x minus h squared at the bottom. Is that right? So as x approaches to infinity, again, we can disregard this term. So that's what's left over. So the asymptotes for vertical, tra vertical transverse axis is y minus k equal to plus or minus b over a x minus h. Still the same thing. Same thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. Ah, uh, right, right, that's wrong. Uh-huh, thank you. Should be outside, yeah? Yeah, mm hmm Okay, so go ahead and do the example. To the very first. Um, move the constant to the right. right. Uh -huh. So we get 4x squared minus y minus 1 squared equal to minus 4, right? Mm -hmm. And we have to make the right hand side as 1. So we have to divide by minus 4. Then we will get x squared over minus 1 squared minus plus y minus 1 squared over 2 squared equal to 1. Is that right? So is it with horizontal or vertical? Which transverse axis? Vertical transverse axis, right? Uh -huh. So what's a? a squared is 1. So a is 1. And what's b? B is 2. And how is A squared, B squared, C squared related? Mm. C squared is equal to A squared plus 
b squared, right? Uh huh. So what do we get for c? Square root of five, right? Uh huh. So x y, where is the center? Zero comma one is the center, right? Uh huh. So center is here, zero comma one. Uh huh. So from there, it is one two. So we can draw an asymptote. So it is b minus a plus or minus y minus k is plus or minus b minus a times x minus h. So the slope is when a is one, b is two. When a is 1, b is minus 2, so plus or minus, so we'll, we can plot all these points with plus or minus. Plus or minus b a, so it goes like this. This is the asymptote. 1, 2. Is that right? Okay. So from 1, a, this much is A, that's A, right? So the vertex of hyperbola is stationed here and here. One away from the center, that's A. Is that right? This is with vertical transverse axis. So that's A, but my vertex of the hyperbola will be on the y-axis. Right? Uh-huh. Yeah. So I have to go to B much. B, B. So these, these are the vertices of my hyperbola. Remember, it is vertical transverse axis. Vertical. C squared is A squared plus B squared. So it is here. So it is placed like this. Where this center has 0, 1 as its coordinate, and this one is what? 0, 3. Uh -huh. How about this one? 0, minus 1. Uh -huh. Fine? Mm. And where are foci? From the center, how far away? Square root of 5 away. So it will be inside. And then 1 here. So foci are placed there and here. Okay, let's give the coordinate. So 0, comma, what's the coordinate of this point? It is 1 here, square root of 5 there. So it is 1 plus square root of 5. Is that right? Mm -hmm. How about this one? That's minus 1 and that is square root of 5. 0, comma, minus square root of 5. Plus one, right? Uh huh. Okay. So the property of a hyperbola is the following. So before we move on, any question? So if we have hyperbolas like this, there are four, four chi. So if this is a light, once it hits the reflector, then it will reflect. Which direction does it reflect? It reflects to the direction from this point of reflection and the focus when we join the line, 
this is point of reflection and then this is the other focus focal point so there is a line joining the two given these two points there is a line right so this will reflect off to that line to that line through that line so it goes like this once it once a light is emitted to there then I can put a line to the point of reflection to the other focus and it will reflect like, like this so the light gets dispersed so for example So, this is the picture of somewhere on the street in Sangdodong, right? So, right, this is hyperbola, and there's an imaginary one. Mm -hmm. So, the lamp is stationed at the focal point. Okay, so when I emit the light like this, it will hit the hyperbolic reflector, and then there is another focus here. So there will be a line joining the other focal point with the point of reflection, and it gets reflected like that. The light gets reflected like this. So do you see that I will get a light which will get dispersed through, right? Uh -huh. So that is the property of hyperbola. Any question? Okay. So let's read property. Shijak. Light rays emitted from one focus reflect off a hyperbolic reflector in the direction of the line from the other focus through the point of reflection. This spreads the light and produces a floodlight effect. Okay, so we are done with the conic sections. Next topic is sequence. Sequence. So motivation, what is sign of half? What sign of one half? Does it exist? Oh, why does it exist? Sign is defined for every real number. <laughs> is that half in degrees or in radian measure? It's in radian measure. I didn't put circle there, right? Uh, so half radian measure. So if I draw the graph of sign, it goes on like this forever. And this is half. And what is this point right there? Pi over 2. Pi over 2 is approximately what? 1.5, approximately 1.5. So half will be somewhere here, right? So sign of half exists as a real number. If you plug in half and sign on your calculator, it will give you some number. How do we calculate that number? So that's the topic. So what we'll do is the following. We'll produce sine x. We'll approximate sine x with a something like this. What's that on the right hand side? If I cut it at some point, it's nth degree polynomial. Sine is not a polynomial. Sine is a trig function. 
if we can somehow generate a polynomial which approximates the sine function, then I can plug in one half into x. I can always calculate the right hand side. So I will approximate sine half by that number. So we have to set the basis for that. Why it is, why it can be done, why it can be justified. So that's the motivation. We want to approximate a function by a polynomial if possible. Okay? So preliminaries for that are sequences and series. So motivation is approximate, approximate a polynomial with approximate a function function with a polynomial that's we are heading for okay so to do that let's define something called sequence sequence okay so let's read cheese a sequence denoted by curly bracket a n m bigger than or equal to 1 or a 1 dot a 2 dot a 3 dot 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 is a what do you think is a something whose domain is the set of all natural numbers n so when I plug in n equal to 1 I get a 1 n equal to 2 I get a 2 so it is n to a n uh, function, function. Why is it a function? I get exactly one output. Mm -hmm. And what's my domain? Natural numbers. Uh huh. It's a function. Function. So these are real numbers. Okay, is a function whose domain is the set of all natural numbers n. A n, if n corresponds to n, a n, so when it starts with n bigger than or equal to 1, then this n will correspond to this n, right? Huh? So a n is called what? Mm, a n is called the nth term of the sequence. Nth term of the sequence. Make sense? Nth term. So for example here, what's my first term? A1 is my first term. What's my second term? A2. Okay. For example, Suppose I have a sequence like this, a n n bigger than or equal to zero. That's how it is defined. Okay? What's my first term? A zero. Exactly. What's my second term? A one, etc. So first term is the first output. What's nth term? Nth term? A sub m minus 1 according to this formula, okay? Next, let's read. Shija. The nth term a sub n can be given a by a formula. Hmm, this is a formula, okay? What's first term? According to this formula, what's the first term? A. A1? It is A. A. Okay. So first term is A. What's the second term? A. What's the third term? A. What's nth term? A. Right. This is called constant sequence. As I mentioned in the earlier note, 시작. 
Note, it is not necessary that the first term of a sequence correspond to n equal to 1 in the formula. To get the first term in this formula, I have to plug in what? n equal to 0 because it starts at 0. So first term doesn't have to correspond to n equal to 1 in the formula. Get it? Uh -huh. So if I list them down, what's my first term? According to that formula, what's my first term? 0 over 1. What's the second term? 1 over 2. Third term? 2 over 3. What's the nth term? n minus 1 over n. Make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Note, 시작. Note, how many formulas possible to define the exact same sequence? Would you define this sequence differently? Are there any other formula which will give you exact same output? Give me a different formula, which will give you exact same sequence. Is it possible? It's not possible? Are they the same or different? Why are they the same? They give you exact same output. Right? So the formula is not unique. What's unique is the list. Okay? Can you give me another one? Yeah, a sub n is, you can put n minus 2 over n minus 1, n bigger than or equal to 2. They all give you the same, same exact sequence. Right? But do they have the same first term? Do they have the same first term? What's the first term of this sequence? Zero. What's the first term of this sequence? Zero. Because the list is the same, first term, nth term does not change. Formula changes. You know what I mean? What's the first term? For the first term, what do I have to plug in? N equal to 1, right? Then I get 0 over 1, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Get it? Okay. So, the formula, it can be given by a formula or it can be given by a relation, a recursive relation, for example, like this. N starts from where? N starts from 1, uh -huh. That's, that, that is given, that's the formula. So what's the first term? Uh, two. 2, A1 is 2. This one starts to act from A sub 2. So here A1 is 2, and it starts from 1. So when N is 1, we get A sub 2 equal to a1 over 2 plus 1 over A1. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And this formula, again, act. So, A sub 3 is A sub 2 over 2, 1 over A sub 2, etc. So, if I list this sequence, then the first one, first term is 2. What's the second term? 1 over 2 plus, I'm sorry, uh -huh. this is A1 over 2, 2 over 2 plus 1 over 2, is that right? Uh, which is 3 half. Uh -huh. And what's the third term? 3 over 4 
plus two thirds one over eight two, and we can calculate this number. And it goes on. So a sequence can be given by recursive formula. Or it can be given by a list. So what does da 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 mean? Yeah, it continues in this pattern. When we put dot dot dot, we are keeping the pattern. Even if I didn't write it, definitely. It goes on like this. So what will be the next one? One, two, three, four, over, four, 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 four right? So it keeps the pattern, same pattern. So it means it goes on in this pattern. So what will be a sub n? If I were to write a formula that represents this sequence, what will be a sub n? Mm, it will be n factorial over n to the n, exactly. Okay, now let's look at the graph of a sequence. Graph of a sequence. What's the domain? What is the domain? A set of all natural numbers, right? So if we had this, a n equal to n over n plus 1, n bigger than or equal to 0. Suppose this is my sequence. It is given as a formula and I were to draw the graph. Do I start at zero or do I start at one? What's the domain? It's a function, function, right? So domain versus the range, yeah? Uh -huh. What's the domain? Set of all natural numbers. So, your domain starts at 1. You plot first term. So, it does not correspond to n equal to 0. It corresponds to 1. Every sequence, however the formula is given, the graph should start at 1. First term. Get it? Okay. So, at 1. That's very important. Domain is set of all natural numbers, so it should start at 1. That's nth term. Okay, so at 1, what is my output? Huh, is it 1 over 2 or 0? What's the first? This is term. That's nth term. Remember, that's nth term. Okay? So what's the first term? First term is obtained by putting in n equal to zero. So we get that's what we get, right? Uh huh. So we have to plot one comma zero. It's the first term. Its output is zero. So you will plot n comma a sub n, but that n, this n can be different. This is nth term, okay? So it starts at zero. At two, when I put two, means that is the second term. What's the second term? 1 over 2. Uh -huh. Third term, 2 
descriptors, etc. Yeah. Okay. What's the graph of the orange one? This and that are exact same sequence, right? Uh, so when I draw the graph, it is again this. So even if they are defined differently, because it's the same exact list, we have the same graph. We can define the limit as n approaches to infinity of a sub n. Okay, so a sub n is the nth term. So recall, we say limit x approaches to c, f of x equals to l. What was the definition? <coughs> what was the definition? For every epsilon, we can choose what? Delta, right? Uh huh. So for every epsilon positive, there exists what? Delta positive such that whenever x minus c, for the limit, do we look at the case when x equal to c? No. Uh -huh. So x minus c bigger, less than delta, then what should be true? The distance between f of x and l should be less than epsilon. As x approaches to c, the y value gets close to l. That was the definition of the limit of a function. Look at this sequence right there. Look at this sequence right there. If I keep going, Will it converge to some number? Every number gets close to what? When n is big, it, uh, it goes to 1. Yeah. Such a sequence is called convergent sequence. Convergent sequence. Hmm? Okay? Mm -hmm. So we'll do convergent sequence, limit of a sequence and series next time, tomorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm.